everything was going so well, but wait, there's more, the live stream said, and then the second stage of Starship blew up during the integrated test flight seven. Not what we expected. I'm not gonna speculate today on what went wrong. Well, I'll do that a little, but I'm mostly gonna focus on what's next. What does SpaceX need to do still with its test flights? How can it recover from this? And what do we need to see happen before SpaceX is ready to launch its Artemis 3 mission, which is the huge mission that we're all waiting on Starship to be developed in order for SpaceX to go do. First, I wanna say how awesome it is that SpaceX just attempts these new things. This was a new Starship. This was Block 2, larger, um, more propellant, you know, taller. It was a new vehicle. And with a new vehicle, you can't assume that things are gonna go 100% perfectly, even though we hoped. We hoped it would. Um, so what we saw was that it successfully launched. It successfully separated. We have lift off. The first stage booster successfully was caught by the tower, which is just jaw dropping every time that happens. I mean, every time it's been two times. It's just amazing how they can do that. That's just absolutely incredible to me that it seemed to even be even more controlled this time. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just seemed to be that booster came down and it was just very controlled and very smooth as it was caught by the chopsticks. I mean, just so nice. And then what we wanted to see was the ship part of Starship, that second stage, getting to suborbit, because all of these are still suborbital tests, and then being able to successfully relight and have, you know, do whatever tests still need to be done. For example, they wanted to deploy 10 demo satellites, you know, d d d dummy satellites. They wanted to deploy 10 dummy satellites this test, and that did not happen because the ship blew up. Goodbye to Ship 33. We're seeing some spectacular amateur imagery coming from the internet. None of it's confirmed yet, but there's enough of it that we can reasonably say that the ship broke up over Turks and Caicos. Um, some people caught it from cruise ships. Looks beautiful, but also devastating. The next step, obviously, is to do an investigation. SpaceX is going to be required to do an investigation by the FAA in order to be recertified to fly the eighth Starship test, whenever that may be. And I have a feeling that this is gonna take a little bit longer than they want it to. You know, it's not gonna be weeks, I think it's gonna be months. Hopefully it won't be that many months. I could be wrong, I really hope I'm wrong. But the way that this broke up, and you can, you can kind of liken it to earlier Starship tests, but the way that this broke up, and the fact that planes were having to maneuver around it, but the image here from Scott Manley, where he showed like some of the trajectories of the aircraft in the area just moving to avoid the debris like that to me is enough that the uninvolved public was affected we're gonna have to see how the FEA reacts baby's just not liking me recording in the evening so here we go again what still needs to happen when the FAA gives a launch license to SpaceX after an investigation where they figure out the root cause and are able to fix it we still need to see Starship get to Leo we have not seen it get to orbit yet so that is the very next thing I am hoping that they will do either with test flight 8 or a future test flight. This year, I'm still hopeful that they can get in-flight refueling, in-orbit in, in refueling. For that, they need two starships to not only be in orbit at the same time, they need to dock together and have that procedure tested out. That is going to be crucial for Starship's future missions. And then we need to see absolutely everything having to do with getting to the moon. We need to see a translator injection. We need to see, you know, getting to the vicinity of the moon. We need to see landing on the surface of the moon. You know, these are uncrewed, landing on the surface of the moon and presumably getting off the surface of the moon safely as well before Artemis 3, which is currently scheduled for 2027, although that is extremely likely to slip until 2028 or later, but still, it's only like three years away. SpaceX can do a lot in that time. You know, there's other factors that are delaying Artemis 3. There's the spacesuits, for example. There's the heat shield of Orion. There's who knows what's gonna happen with the new Trump administration and the way that they might shake up the architecture of Artemis. However, what we absolutely need to see for the current configuration of Artemis 3 and for any future missions to anywhere, really, to Mars, we need to see Starship in orbit doing the refueling, having a life support system. That's absolutely gonna be crucial for any crew on board. So many things need to happen and a lot of it needs to happen ASAP. 
And so this setback, while it's not devastating, it is a setback. It will slow things down. They are going to need to reevaluate whatever they did to change the, re the uh, block two configuration. There's a block three, by the way, that's supposed to come by the end of this year. I don't know if that's still going to happen. There's various iterations of Starship that they are planning for, and they need to figure out what went wrong with this one so that they can have successful Starship tests in the future with the even larger Starships and the even more ambitious test flights. I am wishing SpaceX the best. Obviously, this is not a great outcome. So what we need to see now is really good success for the rest of the year, I'm really hoping. Otherwise, I do fear that Starship is going to slip too far. And I don't think it's going to be that the next one, the next one, next one are going to blow up. I think they're past that. I think this was just a bad day, uh, but you really never know. And so I'm really wishing Starship the best and wishing SpaceX the best in recovering and getting move on because they really need to get a move on with successful milestones for Starship. I've already seen some speculation as to what went wrong. It's possible that there was a fire. It's possible that there was something that you know, peeled away from the Starship there's something that peeled away from the ship. I mean, all this is just based on the live stream and the images that are coming out. And I don't think we're really going to know. So I think if we're, we need to wait and to see what the investigation says, what SpaceX uncovers. I'm actually curious to see what you think in the comments. Please tell me, do you think this is going to take weeks? Do you think it's going to take months? Like, do you think it's going to take six months? Like, how long do you think this investigation is going to take? How long until SpaceX uncovers what went wrong and the FAA grants a new license for the next test flight? I am kind of on the fence here. I think it'll be more than weeks, but less than six months. You know, maybe, maybe something in the vicinity of a month or two. I'm really hoping it's not longer than that. Elon Musk published this after I recorded. And so I'm just adding this in here because we do actually have some real information that's not speculation from the horse's mouth. It says preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. Apart from the obvious double checking for leaks, we will add fire suppression to that volume and probably increase vent area. Nothing so far suggests pushing next launch past next month. So remember that's Elon time talking next month, being February. So my guess is it's gonna be more like March, but I'd sure like to be wrong. And of course, it's not entirely up to SpaceX. It's up to the FAA to approve the new launch license, unless someone can tell me if this one falls under the previous launch license, but I don't believe it does. What's really impressive here is how quickly they were able to turn that around, how quickly they were able to identify the issue and propose a solution. I mean, my hat's off to the SpaceX team. They really are some of the best in the industry.